Today we're going to spend a few minutes talking about a furnace board and some uh, some terminals on it, just the look and feel of it, and also show you a couple voltage checks that you can do uh, on this particular board. Uh, the unit that we're getting this off of is a Goodman 80% furnace, and uh, as you look at the board, uh, it looks a little different than the standard or some of the older uh, standard 80% furnaces, and that's because this one has an X13 motor inside the furnace. It's not a PSC motor. so. Uh, the part number on this one is going to be a, uh, a PCB BF145. Um, that's Goodman's part number, but uh, basically it's going to be a White Rogers 50X57. And there's, of course, uh, some superseded uh, part numbers out there and such. But uh, what we're going to do with this one, there's a couple terminals that are a little bit different. Uh, this board has dip switches on it and some things that, uh, as I said before, are not your typical uh, furnace board, but we always think about the old PSC motors, okay? So uh, we'll spend a few minutes doing this. I'll probably just show a picture and highlight some areas and kind of voice over a little bit. But uh, don't worry, if you don't want to watch that, I'll put a little chapter in there, a little bookmark, and you can skip through the voltage checks at the end. So uh, hang tight. We'll look at this board, try to lay it out so it's, it's pretty easy to understand and then we'll uh, jump in the shop. All right, here we go. So we're gonna try to walk through this board real quick. And uh, the easiest thing to start with is the one and only serviceable part on this control board. And that is the three amp fuse that you see here. So that's pretty standard, self-explanatory, nothing really big. It protects the transformer just like uh, pretty much every other circuit board that you'll see that has a fuse on it so so now that the fuse is out of the way we'll talk about the other obvious one that's pretty standard on the circuit boards and that's going to be the terminal block and you'll see here they didn't solder every uh, connection point on they just did the main five your R and C that's going to be your power connections for 24 volts we've got a G a W and then a Y Y2 screw so uh, for me R is pretty Pretty easy. I know that that's power that's going to come out of the circuit board and it's going to go into the thermostat. And the G, that's going to be a signal, you know, of course, for your uh, fan coming from the thermostat. Common is going to be uh, supplied for the thermostat and the contactor. W is another input. And Y is the big one that uh, I think throw a lot of young guys off. Why do I have a Y connection here if I'm not? using a contactor on the inside furnace. Well, that Y, uh, especially in the case of this board here with the X13 motor, we use that screw. Uh, there's nothing, nothing that says you can't put uh, the two yellow wires in a wire nut and just have the thermostat control the contactor directly. Uh, it's still going to do that, but you need to put the two yellow wires underneath that screw because what you're doing with that signal is you're letting the board know that you're in cool mode. And it, of course, can then adjust the CFM of the blower uh, on your X13 or your variable speed types. So if you see the Y connection there, it's the reason they put it there, go ahead and use it. As we go around the board, you'll see uh, several small relays that are sticking on top of the board. But the next big thing, uh, don't overlook the 24 volt humidifier terminal. Uh, you can use that if you have a humidifier that you want to engage as you're running this furnace. But the big one is this 12-pin plug that's sitting here. This is going to be a variety of things. Uh, you have to look at your wiring diagram when you see one of these on here. But uh, this is usually the main plug, what they label as P1 on some brands and models. But this is going to be where your, uh, your board is doing its diagnostic checks that that LED comes into play with. It's going to send power out to your rollouts and it expects to see that power come back in. It's going to send power out to your gas valve and, and different things. Uh, it's also going to probably, it's probably going to have the uh, flame sensor come back in here so you get that microamp signal so that it has verified that you do indeed have a flame there. So uh, uh, 12 plug pin or 12 pin plug I should say um, very common on these furnace boards, but it's there to, uh, to have your ins and outs. And this is where we can do some voltage checks to verify that power was sent out and also comes back uh, through these safety switches and things. 
So as we move away from the plug and we get into our next uh, area, you'll see that this is a basically a six pin plug. Um, it's all in one row. It's not like the main plug that uh, had the 12 wires with three rows of four or four rows of three, whichever way you look at it. This is where your blower motor hooks up that X13 style motor. So the X13 style motor, you have high voltage on it all the time and it waits for a low voltage signal on one of five taps typically. So you'll see here we have a bunch of T numbers, T1, T2, T3, so on and so forth. And the last one is gonna be common. So these are all 24 volt signals uh, or 24 volt pins. This is where, like I said, your motor hooks up and you can check voltage to ensure that the board is indeed sending out that low voltage signal to the module on that X13 motor. It looks like in our case here, we're only using four of the five, five taps and you'll see an X that uh, seems to indicate that we're not using tap five. So let the manufacturer decide what's being used you just know how to check it. The next area is going to be basically a lot of your L1 connections. You'll see as, as we look at it from left to right, you have a line H. This is your L1 side of power, 120 volts coming in to the board itself. This is basically where everything starts. So it says line H, your line hot. Uh, the only thing that should be before this in the power is going to be your door switch more than likely. So, uh, but we have our connection to give our board power. That's the line H. We have a place that the transformer pulls that, that L1 power, that 120 volts off. That's your transformer H. We have a circulator H. Remember that the circulator, the blower, needs 120 volts all the time. The X13 style always has power on it as far as high voltage is concerned. The low voltage signal is what engages it and actually turns it on in that module. So we will always see high voltage power coming out of that circ H uh, terminal. And then you also have a 120 volt humidifier and an electric, uh, or excuse me, electronic air cleaner terminals as well. We also, uh, on the opposite corner, we have our neutrals. And uh, if you were to flip this board over, you'll see that basically all the neutrals are connected as well as the line H, the X former H and the circulator H on the uh, high voltage, the hot side. So uh, it's just a bank of neutrals and each one of those are labeled as well for uh, your different loads that you're trying to power. Uh, as we look at this next plug that's right off of the side of the neutrals, what you'll see is it's just a simple two pin plug. And uh, just like the other plugs on the board, uh, only one thing is made to go here and it goes in a certain way. But uh, this plug uh, on Goodman systems, you typically see the inducer motor and the igniter come out of this plug. So don't think the plug like uh, an outlet in your home or an extension cord where you have L1 and neutral uh, in the same plug. Both of these are going to be your hots, your L1 hot. So that's 120 volts coming out. One is going to be for the inducer motor, one's going to be for the igniter. So if you're checking voltage coming out of the board here, be sure that you are aware that the igniter will only have voltage for a few seconds and the inducer uh, should have it longer uh, as long as you're doing a call for heat. This furnace board has something that uh, I haven't seen used but a few times and mainly in larger commercial applications where we had two identically sized furnaces operated off of one control. So it has a twin function and you can look in the manual for the twin function, uh, but basically it's, it's going to be uh, two of the same model uh, units, uh, control boards, everything, but uh, they're, the thermostat is going to operate on both at one time. So the easiest way to think about it is staging. If I had, if I had a need for 100,000 BTUs of heat, but I put in two 50,000 BTU furnaces, then I could turn you know, one furnace on and get that 50,000 BTUs and then turn the other one on as a second stage to get the full capacity needed. Um, from what I, what I think about when I see the twin is basically making sure the blower for either unit um, is on with the other one. That way we don't create a basically a, a recirculation uh, within the two units because typically uh, as I said when I've seen them is you have 
two units side by side. They share a common return, they share a supply, but basically they're they're butted together and they work in staging applications. So look in the manual for that one. All right, now we get to the good side of the board. So uh, obviously, uh, first thing I'm gonna show you here is gonna be the LED diagnostic light. Uh, this thing, a lot of guys look for it. It's, uh, it's a way that shows powers on the board. It also shows us errors. So um, with that LED kind of goes this fault switch. So as you look in the manual, uh, you can use the LED as far as a diagnostic, and there's all kind of error codes in the manual that tell you what to look for. Uh, you're looking for a certain amount of flashes. So one flash could be that it's a system lockout. Uh, you would have a pressure switch open flash, a pressure switch closed flash, you know, just all these different things. Um, standard stuff for your, uh, your furnace control boards. Uh, but this circuit board that Goodman has put in here has a fault uh, switch. So if you hit that uh, fault switch, you, you push that button down for like two seconds, then the LED uh, is going to start blinking and indicating to you the last five, I believe, uh, the last five uh, errors that it knows. So if you had a stuck pressure switch and it went out on lockout, those are two distinct error code flashes. It will tell you which one or both. Um, it'll flash them in order. But that is a way to basically recall the history of what it is recorded for error codes going off. So, very useful tool. And last but not least, we have your dip switches. Um, a lot of circuit boards don't have these, uh, especially the PSC motor styles of furnace, but this board does. And as you look at it, you'll see that there's basically like a thin plastic covering over it, kind of like a saran wrap almost. But we have a, uh, several sections on here. We have fan, heat, we have a cool, and we also have an HOD. Okay, so the, the HOD is your heat off delay switch. And basically this is uh, just like a light switch on and off, but depending on the configuration that you put this in, uh, for the heat off delay, that one single switch by itself, uh, right next to the fault uh, recall button, um, you can have a 100 second or 150 second heat off delay that your, that your blower is gonna stay on when the heat turns off, when you lose that call for heat. So if you turn uh, one switch on, uh, or if you turn the, that one switch to the on position, then you're gonna get a 150 second delay, which is you know uh, a little over two minutes. If you leave it off, then it goes for 100 seconds, which is you know um, a minute and a half, you know, not quite two minutes. Um, your cool speed, you can basically choose which tap that you are engaging uh, on that X13 motor when you select a configuration of these dip switches. So you have three switches there, one, two, three. Uh, if you leave them all off, you're going to hit uh, tap one. If you turn them all on, then you're going to hit um, tap one as well. So if you want to get tap four, I believe it's, on, it's off, on, off. So you read the manual for this part because uh, usually you're not going to see a, uh, all the default selections for every you know, model that this board is going to be in. So if you don't see that this plastic has been basically kind of torn a little bit and, and some technician using a, a screwdriver to move that dip switch, then it's probably not configured properly. You make sure you, you double check that. But once again, depending on which switch you have in the on position and which switch in the off position, will dictate which cooling speed you, you'll have. And it's the same way with your, uh, your heat speed. As the motor is, is, is being used in heat mode while your furnace is lit, what speed are you gonna use? Uh, you've got two selections on that. And basically, if they're both off, you're gonna be using tap one. If they're both on, you're gonna be tap three. And you can choose your own configuration from there. The last one's gonna be just the fan motor, so your fan on. Uh, all by itself, you know, just circulating air. Basically, like I said, once again, two switch configuration uh, method, just, you know, position the switches in the appropriate. So now that we spent a few minutes going over all the different uh, components on here, kind of the layout of what this board looks like, I'll take you out in the shop, show you a couple different voltage checks that I would do on here. 
Uh, it's not going to be very in depth, but uh, this is just a kind of brush over or a, a run through of this board just to give you an idea of what it is. So uh, voltage checks are coming. Stay tuned. All right, so here we go. We're going to do some checks on this Goodman unit. There we go. Got my knee pad down. Um, what I'm going to do is, uh, first things first, when you take the covers off, this door switch is going to open. All right. I'm not one of those guys that condones jumping out safeties or taping over door switches. So what I made myself, and this stays with me, I've only got one, and that way when it's missing, I know that, that I've left it somewhere. Um, but uh, I have to put it back, okay? What I've done here is I cut a small jumper wire. It's got two male connections on it. And instead of taping over, uh, you can see some remnants of some tape where somebody has taped this door switch before myself. Um, what I do is I pull the wires off the door switch when I am troubleshooting a furnace. Um, they're usually insulated female terminals. So I pull them off. I don't want the, of course I'm gonna have the door off, so I don't wanna um, cut the furnace off while I'm working, but I will use a temporary jumper that way I can turn the power on and check everything so I will take that and put it back in my tool bag when I get done with the furnace all right so uh, we're gonna do about a half a dozen checks maybe a couple more maybe eight but uh, we're gonna look at how I would check some of the things on a board just so uh, some of the young, younger guys may get this in their head um, and understand what they're looking for now now that we've jumped the door switch what I want to do is make sure that my furnace is getting power so over here in this corner, as we went over uh, with the board removed from the system, uh, over here in this corner is your main power connections. You've got your line power here, your hot, and you've got your neutral up top. So if the lighting's terrible, I apologize. What I'm gonna do to make sure that this board gets power, because this is power for everything, I'm gonna remove the black hot wire, the L1, okay? If I can get, uh, there we go. I'm gonna pull those two out. And this is my L1 and my neutral, my line H and my line N. And what I'll do is I will remove them from the board. Now everything's gonna shut off on the board, but I'm, I have to know that I'm getting power all the way through these two lines, one way or the other. So, and then I'll reapply power. It's gonna go through the door switch. And you can see here, I've got 120 volts. Or maybe you can see it. I've got 120.4 volts on here. So when I disconnect or, or when I reapply, I should say, when I reapply this power, I'm now going to give that to the board. And it's going to do all its different functions, you know, power the blower motor, power the inducer motor, the igniter, uh, everything. All right. So when you're looking for power going in, you may have to pull the leads off of the board. When I'm looking for power coming out, well, I'm still gonna pull the leads off the board, but we, we look at it a little different, okay? So if I'm gonna check for that 120 volts going into my transformer, I'm once again gonna pull the wires off, all right? And that one's on there, I'll need a pair of pliers to, uh, to safely get it off. There we go. Don't wanna pull the wires out of the terminal, we just wanna pull the terminal, okay? Or, so if I'm looking for power going to my primary side of my transformer, I remove the wires, but we're not going to check the wires because, I mean, you've unplugged it, so there ain't, there's no way power can get to it. What we have to do is we have to check the terminals themselves, okay? So I'm going to check this transformer neutral and this transformer hot, and I've got 120.4. Now the voltage may go down as we actually turn things on and run, but when you're looking for power coming out of the board to a load, you still have to pull the wires off, but you have to check the board, not the wires, all right? So we have it and we can make power, high voltage, low voltage, whatever. I'm gonna reattach these. Mm. There we go. And we'll get on with the power checks. Now, since I'm here, if I'm worried about the primary side of this winding, I can go ahead and ohm out that particular load, and I've got uh, 18 ohms, which tells me that it's not an open lead, uh, it's not an open uh, winding, so I will go ahead and reattach these wires 
back to the board. So the third check I'm going to do, uh, I mean, it's kind of obvious though. Here's my 24 volts coming from the transformer. All we have to do here is check at the transformer. All right. And I've got uh, 27.63. So uh, that's a good low voltage power source. And you can see here that goes down into the plug. All right. Now, sometimes if you unplug the main plug, uh, because there's so, so many wires and they're all in one bunch, you may have to, just because I have power on one end does not mean it went through the other way. So what I've done here is I've taken some two wire thermostat wire and what I will do is if I'm looking for a low voltage load, I will take those two wires here and they're stripped back fairly wide. Instead of jamming my leads in there, I will take this two wire and insert it in there all right well enough that it's going to make you know contact and then now I am removed out here I can check my I can check my low voltage out here away from all those plugs and I've got my 27 volts so I know that power is going into the board from my transformer if it's going into the board, all right, remember the fuse on there. Now, my main power supply for that 24 volts is at the transformer. So I'm going to leave, and this goes into the hopscotch method. If I, if I know that I've got 24 volts going in there, I'm going to leave one lead on common at the transformer, and then I'm going to check power going into the fuse. That's what those little uh, silver-looking tabs to the left and the right of the number are. So to the left and the right of this 3-amp fuse, that number 3, I've got an, expo an exposed piece to get a voltage reading on. So I've got 27 volts going in and 27 volts coming out. So that fuse is good, but if it wasn't, then it, it would be an open circuit. And what you'll see is uh, this LED light, as soon as I pulled that fuse out, which simulates a bad one, uh, it's gonna start blinking a certain error code. And this one is uh, 8 to 10 times, I, I can't remember, we could sit here and count it. But uh, it's going to start blinking that diagnostic LED. Now once you find out in the field what caused that fuse to blow, and you repair that and put in a new fuse, then of course that code's going to go away, the board is sending power out and, back and, and seeing it come back in. So it's going to know that the fuse is good now, alright? But between the outlet of that fuse and this R terminal, okay, we, uh, we have a circuit through that board. So leaving my lead on common, I could check all the way to that R. Now this R is power leaving the board, all right? So now that you know we've simulated that bad fuse and repair, replace the fuse, uh, if that circuit is complete, then I'll get 24 volts on R all the way through, all right? And uh, now, of course, you know, you could do your R and C checks here. And you've basically got, you know, a, an extension of your power supply down here. So I could, I could use this common for all my low voltage checks from here on out. Okay. So we'll run through just a couple and I'll show you, uh, like, the, the rollout switches and how I would troubleshoot them and, and also the blower. Now, on this main plug, we have 12 different wires. All right. We've got red, orange, red. Okay, now I'll try to pop up a wiring diagram and show you just in case you haven't seen this before. But basically, um, one of these corners is terminal one. And usually there's an identifying mark. There's a square corner instead of the other three being round, or they'll put a mark. Uh, in some cases they'll tell you which is first. In this one I have this raised uh, little corner right here that's not on any of the other four, or excuse me, that's only on one of the four corners. So that identifies this wire as the first wire in the plug. All right, Goodman does pretty good about identifying this. So this is one, but now which way do I go? Do I count across the bottom or do I count up? So the next one is orange or yellow. And looking at the diagram, you'll see that, it, that wire one is red and the second one is orange. So we're counting up this plug instead of across the bottom. All right, so one, two, three, and which makes sense that this yellow wire is gonna be the fourth. All right, and I say that because on this particular setup, the, uh, the rollout switch 
has is power leaving on terminal 5. So I'm going to find that fifth plug or fifth wire in the plug and that's going to be a purple. All right, so I'm going to insert part of my little my little uh, two wire thermostat uh, checker here. I'm going to insert it in and it comes back on number 11. All right. So what I'll do is I'll put the other lead on number 11. All right. Now Here's the bad thing. Don't think that these two wires are hot and common. They're both hot. So I'm going to have to leave one of these leads on common, but I have in my hand power, right? Um, I have my two connections, so I can see power go out on one, on ter uh, terminal five, and if, and if the rollouts are good, I can see it come back on terminal 11, which is a little loose in there, all right? There we go. So both of these connections, when you're coming in these plugs looking for your rollout switches, understand that they're probably both going to be a 24 hot. And what you'll need to do is use the common. And many leads have an alligator clip you can attach. You can attach that straight to your common here. Or if you had enough room, you could leave it at your common on your transformer. Now one last thing we're going to look at is the blower. Here's my blower tap over here. All right, so we have tap one, tap two, three, you know, the whole nine, but the last one is common. So what I can do here is put one of my little uh, two wire jumper in the common. And if the board is telling me that it's energizing tap one, then I can put the other one into the tap one spot. And when that blower energizes, I can check for 24 volts here and I can move that wire down tap two, tap three, tap four, and I can find out exactly which tap is being energized. These leads here are not for amperage. They're not for amperage. You would actually need to go up here and find the neutral for your blower, and that would be the one you would check amperage on. All right, so I'll show you that real quick, and then we'll wrap it up. So now what I would do, since I can't check voltage uh, or check the amperage on that plug, that's more of a voltage check. What I would do is I would come up here and find my blower motor neutral. And you can see now I've got a good reading, a little over two amps. You don't, you don't check amperage down here. These are basically 24 volt checks because you're not going to really get anything. All right. Even though I know it's tap two, uh, you know, we've got, you know, the, the amp meter is not really picking up anything. So on the X13, if you want to check amperage, find that other side of power. It's, it's going to be a neutral if it's a 120, and it's going to be an L2 if it's going to be a, a 240 in an air handler or so. So amperage on the main power wire. I know it's a little noisy. What I'm using here is I'm going to use this neutral panel and this plug. We can we have enough room on this one. I can check my voltage coming out. All right. So I've got 119 or so, 119.4, and then this other one I have 119.4 as well. Now up above, out of the picture frame or camera frame, I've got my igniter glowing, and I hope that you can see that. I'm on the left side of this plug. I know it's the igniter. And as soon as that igniter's done, see there, it just dropped out. Once the igniter's done, then this circuit board is going to open that particular switch and stop powering uh, that part of the plug. Okay. The other side is the inducer motor, so it's going to run and it should have 120 volts all the time. All right. So with that particular plug, you do have room to kind of get in there. Uh, I wouldn't suggest using the two wire little jumper uh, on any high voltage because it's high voltage, all right? But um, the checks are very simple. 
Um, I hope you picked up a couple things maybe about uh, removing the wire and checking the board or removing the wire and checking the wire kind of deal. But uh, until next time, we'll, uh, we'll see you.